live, Stuart. How are you? There it is. Great. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. So I'm on, you know, this is, uh, now I'm on the East Coast. You're on the West Coast. And we had a blizzard a couple, uh, about a week ago, which had been in first one in 35 years. You know, I've been out in California for 30 years. So this, that was very trippy. And uh, how is it out there right now? Uh, actually, it's beautiful. Nice and sunny, probably about 65, and it's going to be 85 uh, the, over the weekend. And we'll, uh, Super Bowl weekend will be 85 degrees. Wow. You might want to come back to L.A. Yeah, I, th I think so. So for everyone who's going to be joining us right now, my name is John Sudo. I'm your go-to emotional specialist. And this here is... Stuart Stone, uh, casting director. Hey. So and we're going to be talking... I, I th I, I'm, I'm glad we could, we could have this kind of chat together, Stuart, because, um, you know, working with actors and then bridging the gap, now bringing in casting, going, well, guys, it's not just me saying you need to know this. Casting is going to validate, you know, they can't hire you if they can't, don't recognize what's on your face or they can't, you can't be hired if, if uh, what you're doing is not what they're asking for. So uh, I'm glad we can get this time to chat and our, our subject uh today is going to be uh is your face talking behind your back <laughs> which i love it's such a great thing <laughs> and and you know the, the thing is um when we're talking about is your face talking behind your back you, you of course you've heard of the resting bitch face right right okay so um but today as we're talking that's only one aspect of the talking face. So I, I want I want to kind of talk to you about this going, well, it's not just negative. So before we start, um, there's a couple of things for uh, if you guys are just joining us right now. Uh, if you're on the, um, the Google Plus Hangout, on, on your uh, screen that you're watching, there should be a little grid on the top right side of um, – the screen and on that grid if you click it you'll see Q&A and then you also see something else that says something like what's it called uh, uh, a showcase so in the Q&A uh, if you have a question that you like either myself or Stuart to answer you can write that in and we can uh, we'll be uh, looking at the Q&A and we'll try to answer that for you um, also uh, if you Anything you want to know more about Stuart or myself up on uh, the showcase links or links to Stuart's uh, website. Uh, and Stuart, be even before we start, can you tell us a little bit about, just real briefly about your two you got You have a new book out now, don't you? Yeah, the new book out is designed for primarily commercial actors, but actors as a whole. It really talks about everything from basic headshots. We've put marketing in there now, how to market yourself, social media. Well, you know, just even simple things. I get a lot of people that want, you know, I'm looking for representation. Well, casting directors don't represent. So, um, and I get this all the time. So I've kind of written a book that from every detail, this will help you step by step, what headshots would look like, how to get to the set, when you're on the set. It's just kind of one of those all around books. That's uh -huh. not, it's, and I, we took out all the junk. After I wrote it, we took out all the filler. Okay. I mean, the very succinct, simple book that you can probably read in, a day or a weekend, people are telling me, and really learning it and really getting started and going out there. So it just came out. It's on Amazon. So I'm excited to be helping everybody with that. And the link will be in there, uh, as well as uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, of course, my name is John Sudol. Uh, I'm known to actors across the country and around the world as a go-to emotion specialist. And what's that? It's that people come to me when they have any challenges when it comes to either the creating or revealing of emotions. And that's my specialty. I have two books that are out right now. One is Acting Face to Face. It's the actor's guide to understanding how your face communicates emotion for TV and film. And my second book, Acting Face to Face 2, which is how to create genuine emotion for the camera. And just real quickly, what you need to know about the first book, it's, it's the first book that, that actually identified the significant difference between acting for the camera and acting for the stage. And that difference is how your face communicates what you feel and what you think. And then the second book, the first book identified all the challenges. And then the second book is all about uh, uh, how to solve those challenges. It's a how-to book from step-by-step step on how to get into what I call emotional alignment. 
So we're going to be talking about the um, uh, <laughs> the talking face, which is one of my favorite subjects. And I, I want to share this with everybody. There's a link in there. Uh, and they said that scientists have now discovered the causes for a resting bitch face. You know, I'm sure uh, if we ha uh, have any viewers out there, uh, if you have what was called the resting bitch face, put it in the chat there. Let me know who, it, uh, who out there has it. And, um, or if you've been, uh, people are identifying you uh, as feeling something when you're not. So what is a, a talking face? It's any face that communicates non-verbally. Uh, so it's not neutral, it's communicating something that Communication may be boredom, it may be uh, aloof, it may be pleasure, it may be uh, irritated, annoyed. Um, you, we were talking about this before, but before I go on, I, I, uh, just from a casting standpoint, uh, Stu, um, have you ever uh, run into someone when you looked out, and say, in the waiting room, and you looked at someone and immediately, bang, you had an opinion of them, and maybe that opinion was positive, or maybe maybe it was negative. How often does that happen? It's interesting. I have had people where they're sit. Well, I've even had an assistant who I was like, she's always miserable, and and that's where I learned the term a year ago, resting bitch face. I'm like, what is that? Um, and she's like, that's what I have. And I said, well, you're an actress. I mean, you got to work against that. And she's like, no. And everyone says it, and she's really trying to work hard at it, at removing it. Mm -hmm. But we'll see it in the office too. People sitting in a waiting room, they come in uh -huh. while you're talking to them, giving them direction. The face is talking and we're reading that. And sometimes I'm like, why is that guy being such an ass? Or why is that girl being such a bitch? I'm like, yeah. did you see her attitude? And sometimes I'd say, just get them in here and get them out. I can't put someone like that with my clients. They do something to you, right? You feel something. Yeah. I'm like, and I just feel put off and it's, it's almost like, it, that's interesting you said that. It causes a reaction in us. It, it, you know, it, it causes, it, yeah, and I'm like, wait a minute. So it's putting me off or causing a reaction in my session operator, my person out front. Mm -hmm. And I'm, after talking to you about this, and I'm realizing people have no idea what they're doing with their, what their face is doing to them. Well, it's, and here's, here's the reason why for that. Is because what's on your face right now, just how as your face is, you you went to that muscle relaxation or muscle tension and you do it all the time. So it feels natural. And what I always say is that it's hard to change something that feels right. So in order to be right, you, you have to be wrong. And what I want to do is everybody out there is I'm gonna I'm going we're gonna talk to you about people who have that uh, either the resting bitch face, and I'm gonna give you some suggestions on how to neutralize it, but I think also what people fail to realize is that you can use it for to your advantage. If somebody walks in and they looked um, irritated or annoyed, but you're casting someone who's, who's playful, fun, right? And you look at their face while you're giving direction, going, why did I call them in? Now, here's what a lot of people may not know. Within one-tenth of a second, that's, all, that's pretty fast. We are already making assumptions about someone based on their face. And this, is, this has been studied by a Princeton uh, professor where within one-tenth, a fraction of a second, we look at somebody. Our survival is dependent upon us quickly reading someone to tell whether they're friend, foe, whether uh, they're mating material, or whatever it is, we're gonna read what's on their face and it creates this change in us, either preparing us to flee, preparing us to be aggressive. So when you look at somebody and on their face looks bored, and from your own psychology, you had a feeling about them, and then you're gonna assume what it is they're thinking. Uh, so when we're looking at, at, at people's faces, and going, hey, that's my face, what can I do with that? I don't wanna sit around and put a big smile on it. So here's what I'd like to share with everybody is what are we really reading? To understand um, the talking face, you have to understand emotions. 
how to read the talking face, you also have to understand emotions in, in order to change your opinion of someone. And the mantra that I've come up with is when, I, when I'm working with people, uh, say I'm, I'm out and I'm speaking in front of 100 people, in front of me is all the people looking like, mm -hmm. you know, they got their arms crossed, they got this bored look on their face or disgust, and I had to learn what's on their face isn't about me, it's about them. But within that fraction of a second, my body, I can, I can feel the fear growing and I want to run out of the way. Let me um, share a photo here. And since you and I are talking, um, as you look at these three people, um, let's, can we approach this also maybe from a, a, a casting point of view? But second, but first, when you look at these three faces, do what does it look like his face is neutral? The guy on the left to you. It's interesting. He looks in shock. The girl in the middle is giving me attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the girl to the right looks like she's angry about something. And you know, and sometimes these people will look at me just like this. It's interesting you put that up. Mm -hmm. I'll get a room group in there, and they're looking at me Excuse just me. like this. Mail needs your attention. And I'm like, what's going on? Uh, absolutely. Now, what if I told you that none of these people were feeling anything? They were doing just like what we're doing right now. I asked them just to listen to me, and I took their picture. And this is how they were listening. He looks a little bewildered. And maybe possibly he's seeing some, he could be right now seeing something totally amazing, or he's baffled by what he's seeing. He, what, the, what you're seeing is, is signs of surprise on his face. Now, if you look at the girl in the back, when I showed her this picture, I go, do people ever think that you got an attitude? And she said, of course, she says, all the time. But I don't. I'm sweet. But if you look at her face, the distance from her eyelash to her brow gives us more of a questioning. She has low-hanging eyes, which is, uh, could be a sign of boredom. And she has a strong jaw that's jutting out, which is in the anger family. So whatever it is, she's questioning what you said, and she's irritated by it. The girl on the left, however, is a little bit be, it's because of her lips and that uh, the folds on the corner of her eye. She looks a little bit worried or upset about something. It's very subtle, but there's very low-level sadness in her face. So... so um, and because her eyes are deep set, you might think that she's upset about something. So these people's faces are definitely talking. Now, when you think about doing nothing, and you hear this all the time, and I know people in sessions go, we don't want a reaction, don't you know, just look. And, you know, you're really kind of, you're focused when you're doing nothing. Well, nothing doesn't look like something. Nothing actually looks like nothing unless what's on your face is already talking. Then your nothing actually looks like something. Now, if you know what that something is, that's power. Because as actors, we don't want to feel that void of doing nothing. We want to do something, but you're already doing something, but you don't know you're doing it. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. <laughs> I do. It's, it's interesting because, you know, I never think about it. I'm just like, they know what they're doing. They're giving me that attitude. They... You know, I just assume everyone knows what their face is putting out there and that they must be mad or angry or confused. And that's how we read people, but not the other way. No, it's, you know, in fact, it, it is majority of people been told that, you know, you, are you they, they, you're, they, uh, somebody will say to them, are you upset? Are you angry with me? Are you irritated? Are you annoyed? You seem dissatisfied. You seem like you don't believe me. You seem like I'm an idiot. Now, what are we reading on their face that makes us think that? And if we understand that, then we can actually have more compassion for other people because there is nothing, they are, may not be thinking anything. Now, if you look at, at, at this too, Stuart, there's, there's, there's like four things that attract us. Uh, we pick up from someone's photo, someone's face. One, we pick up the symmetry. Is it sym symmetrical? The, the more symmetrical it is, the fuller the, the lips are, the more healthy looking. We think that they're beautiful. The second thing that we look at is what I call disproportionate parts. 
when you look at somebody's ears are too, a little bit too big or their nose is too pronounced or the eyes are too wide uh, or the lips are too full. These proportionate parts uh, can make somebody very sexy or they can make somebody very odd looking. But when you think about casting real people, now think back when people you've cast, were they all symmetrical or did they have these disproportionate parts because they're considered more real people? The third thing that when we look at somebody is familiarity. Do they look familiar to you? You know what that looks like my ex-wife who I can't stand. I feel the same way about you. You look like my best buddy. Wow, hey, I have this affinity towards you. But the fourth thing that really makes us drawn to someone is emotion on your face. Why? Because if there's emotion on your face, there's something on your face, there's something in your head. Something must have, have happened. Something must be going on. However, if it's that emotion that's on your face is at an inappropriate time, well, then you got conflict. So, right. It's interesting, though, how we don't realize what we're doing. An act, I mean, it's more important for an actor to realize it. But yeah. Well, I mean, you really miss a lot when your face doesn't align with your acting. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, we said that, you know, the other day in class I was teaching, you no, know, everyone's having a problem with their face. And they all, it was a first class for a lot of people. Some of them had had several classes. Mm -hmm. No one told them their face wasn't matching their acting. And I'm like, you've taken all these commercial workshops and no one's pointed any of this out to you. Yeah. And then you wonder why you're not booking, but you're spending all this money. And then I started mentioning about your face and putting it together mm -hmm. and we brought up your book and the whole thing. And everyone was like, we had this big powwow and people, you know, people that need were like, Oh my God, that's amazing. It really works. Well, you know, here, here's the thing we all, we, and I, I, I took a lot of, well, a little bit of heat for this. Um, when, when you think about lying, you have to fabricate some information right it's not doesn't happen you have to control what the truth is you have to uh, uh match up actions that really aren't truthful for you but if you don't do them you will uh that you you will the lie will be exposed when we try to control all um these actions um we uh, oftentimes what happens is a leakage of something the truth and those lit that leakage is, is what gamblers call tells so when we have to remember lines that on our own that's a fabrication when we have to remember to take two steps up or to um, uh, some kind of blocking we have a lot of mental activity so you have a lot of mental activity and plus the brain does not like to deny reality so you have all this going on that you're trying to control. The truth is, I'm nervous and I'm trying to remember the lines. What I want to present is I'm relaxed and I know what I'm talking about. And now you're gonna worry about what your face is doing and what does your voice sound like and is your body in alignment? So that what people don't realize is that good acting takes a lot of control. And just to try to control your face is creating more mental activity so you have to be understand well what it, it is it that i am wanting to reveal what does that feel like in my body sound like in my voice and look like on my face and what do i have to do to uh manage and and create all those uh that that whole expression so well, let's talk about emotions. So what are we reading on someone's face? Because I, I got off on that a little bit. And I don't want to go there. I'm going to uh, show you um, emotions. Oh, here, I got to show you first uh, one more talking face. <laughs> oh, there's a good one. Uh, you know what? My qu favorite quote from Jessica Rabbit is, uh, I'm not bad. I was just drawn that way. <laughs> That's good. Now, when you look at Jessica Rabbit, um, besides, you know, the breasts and the dress, what makes her sexy is two things. One is in the eyes. Now, look at her eyelids. You see, notice how they're heavy? Well, they're yeah. called bedroom eyes. 
when we are experiencing pleasure, that muscle uh, and the lid relaxes. And you can see here, um, this muscle, if you just, the sound of pleasure, hmm, you're thinking of something. So that heavier eyelid is pleasure. And that's what, when, uh, when either we're intoxicated or we are turned on, we, uh, that muscle relaxes. Now, the eyelid relaxing also can be boredom. Now, if you watch, here's pleasure. Now, here's boredom. And it, it's, it's one aspect of, of boredom. It could also be sadness, too. When we're sad, the eyelids get heavy. So it depends on what's happening here. Is there a little smile that's coming up? So women who have, especially who have low-hanging eyelids with a little smile, guys are always thinking that they're, they're hitting on them. Why? Because you look at me and go, hmm, pleasure. Um, so what are we reading? So now I'm going to go into the emotions. Those who heard me speak know there's seven universal emotions that anywhere on the planet people will recognize. And uh, here they are right here. Uh, there is anger, happy, sad, surprise, fear, and contempt. Now, what makes these, why we can recognize them, is that, uh, these emotions, is because they each have very distinct muscle groups that are unique to that emotion and that emotion only. And you will not find the same muscle patterns in anger as you do in contempt or in sad. They're all unique. I'm going to uh, see if I can bring this down to the next one. Hang on a second. Uh, preview. Where did it go? Where did it go? Close that. So my thing is when you – so we're aware that – we're not aware that we're doing this, but what do we do now that we're becoming aware of it? Where are our fixes? Where do – what do we – how do we apply this that we're learning? Well, first – the first step in, in, in applying it is that you have to understand, well, well, what is it that people are reading? So each one – if you look at disgust, you see the upper lip lifting up towards the nose. Uh, in contempt, you see the clamping on one side and being lifted. These are all within the resting bitch face or within the, um, well, almost any thing that we are reading on people because your face speaks an emotional, cognitive, and emblematic language. It does for everybody. So if my upper lip, and, and I'm going I'm to tell you how we can fix this in one second, um, is if my upper lip, you notice how my face is changing? Neutral? Yeah. Now, if you watch now, also here in the eyelids, now I think nothing else is going on in the rest of my mouth. But you can see there's now, all of a sudden, there's focus. Did you just say something to me, Stuart? Say something to you? No, I'm joking. That, that was that. Oh, that yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. In the eyes. Now, yeah, yeah. If you watch what happens to my face with just the... Neutral. Ah, uh, okay. Now, how do you feel if somebody looks at you like this? Like they're giving me attitude. And all I'm doing is moving. So you just really have to be aware what your face is doing and then how to change it. And so, yes. Be aware of it. Your face is talking emotionally. So if you, uh, there's two kinds of faces. One is the static. That means structure for me. It means your brows are already low. They're naturally like that. It means you have right. very thin lips. Well, you're going to be in the anger family. So people are always going to be thinking, are you irritated? Are you annoyed? But if you look at every leading, almost every leading man uh, in the action, they're going to have anger jaw and they're going to have a low brow. Look at Matt Damon. Look at uh, almost all of them, except for Harrison Ford. He, Harrison Ford has a playful contempt. Mm -hmm. his, his mouth is asymmetrical, so he always looks kind of like a little bit of a smart ass, but at the same time, very he has a lower brow. So the only, your face, you have to look at what emotion is my face 
uh, reflecting. And then with the, to, to neutralize it, we have to take away the emotion. For example, it's real, uh, it, for the static shot, it's really hard to do because my jaw is naturally jut forward. But there's, as I said, there's two faces. One is how nat what na face nature and time gave us. The second one is our default face. And this is the face we put on to make ourselves comfortable, to feel better. You know how this is crossing your arms? You go, you look like you're, you're um, you know, you're, you're cut off. You're uh, blocking me off. You go, no, I'm just comfortable. Well, you're comfortable because you're blocking them off. It's the same thing with your face. Think of the face you put on when you meet somebody, the party face. But we also, when we're in an audition, you're putting on a survival or a focus face. I bet you any amount of money you'll see that brown coming down a lot because that's in the anger family, but it's also focus. I don't know who's trying to call us right now. Is someone trying to call us? Yeah. Um, so, so the first step is and um, it is to identify, and this should stop in a moment, like that music. We only got a few more moments here because it's 30 minutes. The first step is you have to identify what uh, emotion your face is communicating. We interpret the emotion. The viewer interprets what's on somebody else's face. So I went, mm -hmm, and you interpret, uh, I'm giving you uh, attitude. I think you're an idiot. I'm judging you. You interpret that. But for me, my mouth is really asymmetrical. And it goes that way, but you are still going to interpret it. If uh, somebody looks at you, and especially I see this with African American males who have a very full lip, the lip is up. So it looks like they got disgust on their face the whole time. Now, the only way you can diffuse it, if it's not your structure, uh, is to try to eliminate the muscle group. So, for example, uh, if you keep going to that jaw, well, you need to relax it. If the brows tend to go up all the time. You need to be aware of that and keep them relaxed. The best way to diffuse anything, lift the brow up. The second best way is to allow the corners to go up. So if the corners are being pulled down, you have to work. And you know what's so cool about this, too, is that you change one muscle uh, emotional muscle group on your face, you change the whole face. Right. One right. muscle group. And as, as I was showing you, this, that one here, or the, uh, the wide eye excitement that, that goes on, that they're all connected to emotions, or um, majority of them are, and we, the viewer, interpret it. So that's how your face is talking, and it may it may be because, as I said, one is your static, one's your default, and one is cultural. We pick up, you know, um, you know. And you notice how you go. Some cultures, you know, they they think they're so full themselves. Well, if you take anybody who has a distance, a, a, a greater distance from the eyelid to the brow, they always look like they're questioning, really. And so, uh, well, this is all really good. I know we're we're done here right about yeah. now, but we should probably yeah. go deeper into this mm -hmm. another yeah, time. We just were touching on the surface on the whole thing, and hopefully, uh, I know some people had sent me their photos, and hopefully, we're going to get time. But um, there's just too much to cover at one time. So I like to leave them with this: find the emotion in your face, uh, where, where what muscle groups are being active, and you can. Um, I guess you, could, you know, check out my website. I have a lot of information on there. Two it would be uh, to work to neutralize it, um, and three. Uh, n n I'm sorry, neutralize it by either bringing the brow up slightly or bringing the corners of the mouth up. Uh, where are you from here, Stu? Heading to do some more casting. And more, you've been going back to it. I'm, I'm going back to casting. You can stop by. We'll, what we'll do is um, uh, take this and uh, it'll be on YouTube. So if you're watching this now and after it's live, 
there's a place to write a comment. Give us a comment. You got a question for Stu? Write it in. A question for me? Put it in there. I hope we answer some questions on. Uh, is your face talking behind your back? We'll do this again, and we'll answer your questions next time around too. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we, you know, if we keep investigating the aspects where you're talking about what's happening and really hone it in, we can do some good for the actor. I appreciate awesome. it, Stu. We'll talk to you real soon. Talk soon. All right. We'll talk to Thank you soon, guys. We're out of here. Right.